Hello and welcome. My name is Trey Bremer. I'm with Mytel, and today I'm going to talk about the My Voice Business Council. Uh, this will be, I wouldn't call it a high level view, but I would call it um, a basic view of the My Voice Business Council. What I want to do today is kind of give you, as a beginner to the council, kind of the lay of the land and let you know some shortcuts you can use to process a call. Um, we're going to look at each part of the screen so you'll understand the breakdown of the screen. Uh, we'll show you how calls roll in, where they show up at, when you can transfer them and how you can transfer them. We'll show you ways to look up internal uh, extensions uh, by last or first name. You can set up special groups that, so you can see departments or set up a group of people that you need to see. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, we'll kind of just give you the basic lay of the land and some of the rules of the council. Uh, this is intended to help you after training uh, to kind of refresh yourself so you're ready to roll. Um, if you have any questions uh, or you'd like some more details uh, about how to maybe customize transfers or that or customize how a call is uh, sent, you can refer to the My Voice Business Council guide. Uh, there's a full guide available on the council and it can answer some uh, a little more in-depth questions. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I want to show you this. This is the icon you'll see on your desktop. Um, if you uh, click on that, it takes less than a minute for it to load, but it does take a, you know, it's not immediate. So you want to make sure that you're loading your console prior to uh, taking over the phones if you shut it off at night. If you're just taking over for somebody and it's up, then you're good to roll. Uh, this is your keyboard that you would see on your computer, and you can process all the calls without even having the screen up. It needs to be up for this to work, but um, you don't have to really click along the screen. You can answer, uh, transfer, hold, or you can cancel a transfer that you've set up all by the keys on your computer, the number keys. So uh, real easy to process a call. And if you know people's extension, uh, it makes this process very easy. A call would come in, you would hit enter to answer the call. You would type in the extension uh, that you want it to go to. And if it's set up where you have to press release, which it is by default, you would hit release and it would send the call along its way. So uh, it makes it really quick if you know extensions. You can see there's a button to press hold, and there's also a cancel button, which means it would cancel it from transferring. So if I hit transfer and I hit the wrong extension, I can hit cancel, recover the call, and start over. So these keys can come into play. There's going to be multiple ways you can answer and hold and transfer calls, and this is one of them. Uh, this is one that's very common people use, especially if they're used to the extension range. Uh, if your operation is much bigger, you may uh, need to look somebody up, and that's where the console is uh, very uh, capable and can get in, and, and you can look people up by name or, or department, depending on how it's set up. <clears throat> Here's uh, kind of the big picture of the My Voice Business Council. This is what it's going to look like. And it looks like there's a lot going on, uh, but it really is separated into little sections. Um, you'll see over when you're when you're in front of the council, you'll see over to your left hand side, there's ways to adjust those screens to give you more uh, more visual of maybe the uh, phone book or if you wanted to see more inbound calls, you can adjust it up and down on that. So there is some adjustments you can make to the far far left hand corner. You'll see an up and down arrow. It's maybe a little hard to see here, but I'll point it out later as well. Um, so it breaks down into multiple parts. So what I'm going to be, do be doing is breaking it down into multiple parts as well. I'm going to start at the top. We're going to kind of show you everything that's up top and what you need to really worry about and what maybe you don't need to worry about. Um, then I'm going to show you the next little section, which is all your directories, how to look people up. Then we're going to show you all the inbound call traffic, you know, an incoming call, how, where that shows up. If you transfer a call, where that will show up. If you park a call, where that will show up or a call's on hold. And then I'm going to show you the source and the destination, which are the two boxes near the bottom, which are going to show you once you've answered the call, what the information is, caller identification information and timers to do with the source of the call. The destination is where you're going to transfer it. 
And then there's little F keys below, which will give you little quick hits. It'll allow you uh, to do things like when a call comes in, it'll change the F2 key to say answer, or it'll uh, show you a recalled uh, phone phone uh, call coming back to you. So it'll give you little uh, shortcuts. The F keys do relate to the F keys on your computer. So if you're comfortable with hitting F2 on your computer more than you would clicking on the screen, that's another way that you can answer it. So when I'm unpeeling this for you, you're gonna see uh, pretty clearly that there's multiple ways to answer every call that comes in. So you're gonna pick your favorite. You know, Maybe you like to double click. Maybe you like to hit enter. Maybe you wanna hit an F key. Uh, maybe you wanna go up top and hit an icon. So all those four or five ways are all available to you each time a call comes in. So if you're at the uh, copier and then you hear the phone ring, you might quickly run over and hit your enter key so you can grab the call rather than trying to scroll up top or, or click F, uh, an F key. So let's go ahead and get rolling. Uh, let's start at the very tippy top. Uh, so we're gonna kind of break these little icons up in the little sections because they are actually sectioned off because they mean different things. So we'll start off here with the little fellow there you see at the desk, and then we'll move over to the sun and then the bell and then the headset. Now, what does all that mean? That's kind of just your control of the council. Let's start off with the little fellow at the desk here. Um, what that is, is your presence. Are you available to take calls or are you not? Um, depending on what your operation is there, you might have multiple consoles. You could have uh, three, four, or five consoles. You could have one console. If you have multiple consoles, uh, then you may be you know, shutting down for the day, or maybe it's the end of the day and you wanna put it in night mode. Um, sometimes in operations, the night and day are determined by when you put the system into night and day. And other times it has to do with timers that are involved. So, you know, you'll have to decide or find out what your setup is. So if it's by timers, like at five o'clock, it just automatically switches to night. You don't necessarily have to put it in night mode. Um, you might wanna shut off, once you make yourself unavailable at the council, it'll automatically put this in night mode, but it won't affect the way the phone calls ring in. There is special programming though, and uh, they should be, whoever's programming and working with you should tell you. Uh, there is special programming where you can put it in a night one or a night two and it'll change the way it rings. Maybe you have uh, a group of people that you send calls to in the middle of the day for lunches or something. Maybe that requires you to put it in night two, but that is information that you wanna you know, find out as, as the uh, project goes along. But let's first talk about you being present or not. So this is what the present key looks like. It's at the far end, it looks like the little, fellow there at the desk. When you press it, you can see it only gives you two choices. You can either be present, operator present, or you can be absent. Absent just means it won't ring this console anymore. So if there's four or five consoles and you are absent, it's going to skip you. If you are absent um, at the end of the day, it just means that the calls won't come to you. But basically you have to be present. When you first log on to the console, it'll have you in an absent uh, status. So you do have to touch this button to make yourself present so you'll receive calls. So keep that in mind. Also, <clears throat> you can kind of see it here um, in my little slide, but you'll see it as, as you use the console. If you hover your cursor over the button or the icon, it'll tell you what it is. So there's not a lot of mystery. I know instead of just saying absent or present, it has a little person at a desk. So that can be a little confusing, you know, the first uh, few days. But keep in mind that uh, if you hover over, it's gonna tell you uh, what each thing is. So uh, on this one, I'm hovered over it and you can see it says operator present. Um, so if I click on this and hit absent, it basically puts me into a night mode and shuts off for all inbound call traffic. Here is the day and night. So it's signified by a sun or a moon. Uh, day is not obviously the sun. If I click on that, it's going to offer me day service. Remember, when you first log into the council, it'll be in night. I mean, it'll be you'll be absent, and it'll be in night one. Um, night two is available sometimes in programming to provide special uh, forwarding. Like if you need a night two, when you put it in night two, maybe that goes to a group of people for lunches or meetings then that could be set up. But uh, generally it's night one and, and day service. And if you are set up so it automatically changes from night to day, uh, it doesn't really matter so much when you put it in night service, but it will automatically go in to night service when you log out. 
This is <clears throat> the bells. Um, unfortunately, my computer that I was demonstrating this on doesn't really have uh, internal uh, ringing, but you can select your internal ringing of your computer. So if you're away from your desk, you can hear your computer make a ringing sound. Um, otherwise, you're just going to hear it in your headset when you have your headset on. This does require a headset. Um, and it has to be a USB headset. It cannot be a like uh, your traditional plug it into the little you know um, little uh, RCA plug on the on the uh, computer. So this will be the bells. When you select it, I can't really show you, but when you select it, it'll pick out what can ring on your computer. So you don't have to like go searching. If you don't have an option for bells internal to the computer, it just won't, it'll be like it is here where it's uh, blacked out or grayed out. <clears throat> the next one is your headset. This is to choose your headset. If you're always using the same headset and you choose it, it's always gonna be good to go. But what happens a lot of times with these consoles are different people might use them. So you may plug in a different headset for different people. And if you do that, you're gonna have to select your headset. Again, it'll find the headset and you just pick it. Um, it doesn't automatically pick it. But uh, when you plug it in and you click on the little arrow, it's going to scroll down and show you, oh, there's your headset. So you just say yes to that. Audio panel is the default. So um, you just wanna make sure your headset that you have plugged in. I use a, a Logitech headset, so it showed up there. I didn't have to search for it or anything, and I just chose it for it to be there. And now that I am the only one using my computer, it never changes. So you don't have to go and select that daily, but only if people are, you know, multiple people are using the computer and they're using their own headsets. Okay. Now we got this little center section. This is just communication. Uh, it can be internal to yourself or it could be communication that you broadcast across different uh, uh, tenant councils. So if you're a solo operation, uh, you don't really need to use uh, all the functionality here. But if you are somebody who is working between multiple uh, attendant councils. This is a way you guys can kind of communicate information. It's a notepad basically that uh, can be not only um, typed on, but it can be kind of pinned to the attendant council. You will notice when the attendant council is open, you have a lot of available real estate over to the right hand side. So you can kind of you know, pin stuff up. And this would be a place where you might put information, you know, it, you know, if somebody is out, you want to make a note of it so people don't send calls to them, you could do that. Um, what it looks like is there's three of them. Uh, two of them are kind of notepads. The other one is an emergency 911 log uh, that'll give you information about who dialed 911. So let's look at the first one. This is your uh, scratch pad. This is just kind of information for you uh, to be able to uh, Put in there, you know, just for your day. Maybe you need a reminder. Hey, there's a meeting in the boardroom. Don't send calls there. Or maybe you're just typing information for yourself about the way calls are being handled by whoever. So you'll see either it's something you'll use a lot or it's something you'll use very little. But it is something that you can see the if you look over to the right hand side, you see the little push pin in the line kind of sideways that allow it to kind of stick onto the screen and not go away when you type so you could keep that information uh front and center so you're able to process calls and see that information so it's just information for yourself putting in the notes you know what's going on today you know i'm going to lunch at noon i don't know whatever you need to remind yourself of during the day you'll you'll kind of see a purpose for it or you won't the next little icon <clears throat> is uh pretty slick it's a mem it's a bulletin board. What that means is not only will you see this information, but it's shared across all the attendant councils. So if you have two or more attendant councils and you use the bulletin board, it'll show that information. So that's nice to be able to relay information to other people. Maybe you have something, don't answer this call, it's a sales call, and you could put the phone number up there and the name, caller ID that comes up. Or maybe it's information that's uh, one of the, uh, head people in the operation have some rules and you wanna make sure everyone understands them or they said, please don't call in today or whatever it is. You can post it and it'll post on multiple uh, tenant councils. So it's a nice way to put a little bulletin up there of what's going on. Or maybe it's just information about the office. You know? You'll know, you see as you go along what use it is to you. 
The next one is uh, the emergency. This is when someone it look, has a little red, it's like a little red cross, it's white and blue, but you get the idea. When someone calls, this will give you the time and date and phone number and detail of uh, anyone who's dialed 911. This way you can keep a log. Um, you can clear this log, so be careful not to do that, uh, but it will uh, give you the detailed information. So if someone dials 911, it'll show up on your board. It'll give you, uh, let you know that there's an emergency going on. And that way, when um, police or fire or whoever shows up, you can direct them to the right extension. So that's where that is. This little section is all kind of call handling. So remember in the beginning, I told you, you know, you can use your keys on your computer to transfer and that sort of thing. This is also the same sort of thing. It's just giving you icons. And if you hover over any of those, uh, it'll also tell you, but I'm going to go through each one just so you know what it is, but it's basically call handling and you can see that they're grayed out, but when they're available, then they will be colored in. So right now everything's grayed out except this little blue. It looks like a horn, which is a pager, which would tap into your guys paging. If you have a page zone, you'll click that and put it, type in the zone number, you know, one, two, three or four. And then it, you are able to page somebody. If you're using, if you're not using overhead or phone paging, then you can disregard that, but it'll always light up like it's available. Um, also, the little keys are in blue because I could go ahead and dial out of this board. If I click on that, I can go ahead and dial out and make a call. Um, so that makes itself available. Uh, everything else is grayed out. It's just because they're, the way I'm showing it to you now, the phone, uh, the console is idle. There's no inbound or answered calls. So when we see a call come in, it's going to turn it green with the little blue handset and it's going to let you know that it's available to be answered. So this is another way you can answer. You can hit enter on your computer. You can go down below and you'll see it says answer down there on the F2 key. But on, in our case here, uh, it's showing it up above as green. So I could just click on this to answer the call. So again, it becomes what are you more comfortable with doing? You know, do you want to click on it? Do you want to double click on it? Do you want to use an F key? Do you want to hit an enter key? All those items will work. So whatever you're most comfortable with, I recommend trying them on, seeing which ones you like. Some people don't like hovering around trying to click on things. They'd rather hit enter and that works perfectly fine. But um, just be aware that uh, it's showing up for you and you can hit enter, uh, hit the uh, icon and answer the call. Once the call is answered, it'll highlight all the rest of the things that are available. And the things that are available are mute because I'm now on the call, so I can mute it and yell across the room, hey, you know, is what's his name in? And uh, the person on the phone won't hear that. Or if I need to mute it while I'm first learning how to use it so I can talk to myself, what do I do next? No one will hear that, so it makes it kind of nice. Um, also, what it highlights when you're on a call, this is, we've answered this call, but if I make a call out, this will also show up. This is tones. Uh, it looks like a little music note. What tones means to you, just, kind of you kind of got to think through it a little bit but it's a computer so when you're typing in numbers you don't want it to be putting in tones so it dials someone so the way they have done this is they have uh, made it so you have to turn on the tones to dial out so if i go ahead and bring up a keyboard if i want to use the keys on my computer i can turn on the tones and then i can type in the phone number i want to dial out or maybe i'm making a call and i need to transfer this to an outside number and there's an auto attendant or something then i can turn on the tone so the auto attendant can hear the dial tone so it's basically turning on dial tone um, this is so the computer understands that you're dialing a phone number and not trying to type in an information into the computer the next one over which is now highlighted because i'm on the phone is the hold so this is what hold looks like um, you'll see um, that if you refer back to the beginning slide on the keys on your computer, you can also hit hold there. But this is another place where you can hit hold. Uh, it'll show up on the F keys down below. I'll show you that in a little bit, how to hold it. Uh, but there that is. This is voicemail. So if I want to transfer someone to voicemail, I could go ahead and use this uh, key. And you know, I could type in the person's extension and hit the voicemail key. 
I can also send them straight to voicemail. So some people, uh, maybe not your operation, but some operations, people will call in. Employees will say, hey, can you send me to my voicemail? If uh, This is especially common for companies that don't have direct dial numbers to the individuals. So maybe they're going to go through the receptionist and say, hey, can you send me the voicemail? And then they can choose their own mailbox or whatever. So there's a way to transfer to voicemail. Okay. We talked about the pager key. Mine isn't lit because... Uh, the attendant console that I have set up here didn't have overhead paging, uh, so there's nothing to do there. Plus, you're on a call, so you can't page while you're on a call, so it'll be grayed out. You have to put the call on hold first, and then you can hit page and choose the, the uh, location. This is a cancel, the tra uh, cancel transfer. I, I skipped um, this little arrow because the company I originally built this for... Um, isn't uh, using that key. Uh, it's a it's a backspace key, but um, this is a cancel transfer. This will allow you to cancel out uh, a transfer. So if I go ahead and hit um, a call comes in, I answer it and I dial in your extension and release it. Um, if it until it's answered or goes to voicemail, I can cancel it and recover that transferred call. So if I transfer it to the wrong person, I have that amount of time, and then that'll go away once it's transferred. I can't cancel it anymore. This is release. So if I go ahead and dial someone's extension, I can hit the release key and it will send the call. Uh, if you want to announce the call, all you do is dial in the extension and wait on the line. As soon as they answer and you have a conversation with the person on the other line saying, hey, there's a call for you. And when I hit release, it sends the call along. This is a correction key. This will allow you to back up if you are uh, typing in something you want to back up a little bit and correct it. You can. And then this is the keypad. This will bring up a keypad that you can dial. You can also use the keys on your telephone. Remember to turn on your tones. But this brings up a little keypad. What I do like about this is I can pin this by using that little um, the little uh, push pin in the line that you see over to the right hand side. And I can keep it up so I can remember, you know, the transfer, the hold, the release. So that's just like what I showed you originally. You can also set it up so it shows you the uh, numbers in order rather than like a phone. So you can choose which way you like that. But that's what that looks like. Okay, the little, uh, some people ask, I skip it, but this little, um, uh, if you go past the keypad before we go to the phone book, there's a, a little icon here. It's a little pyramid with a exclamation mark in it. That's just so you can report a problem. Uh, sometimes that's set up and sometimes it's not, but it'll send a report that you're having a problem uh, with your, your, uh, your uh, council. So you can use that uh, to uh, log reports if it's set up. So they'll let you know if you have that or not. Going below, uh, here's the different, uh, you can see it has different uh, like folders. Uh, the first one is phone book, and then you see busy lamp field, then call history, then my call history. So we're gonna look at each of those. This is how you're going to look up people to transfer calls to. Um, what's really nice about it is it's separated out. The person I was using here didn't uh, have departments listed at the time, but you can do it by uh, name, first or last name, their extension number, the department name, the location name. So if you have multiple buildings, there might be multiple location names. So uh, you'll be able to look them up that way. So the way that works is you just start typing in the last or first name and it brings up all the matches <clears throat> and it tells you the extension. Now I can go down and double click on these and send the call. If I put in the full name and it's only one, I can just hit enter and it'll send it. But uh, you can see that it's giving me the information that's available with the extension number. I could go ahead and put in the location if I wanted to. So if it was multiple locations that you had, maybe you had building one, two, three, and four, I could put in building one and see everybody available in building one. And then I could pick someone maybe who's off the phone. So it's a way you can look for people. If you're specifically looking for somebody, obviously the name and the extension number is going to come into play. But if you're looking for a department, like um, you're looking for payroll or something, you could put in payroll if that's listed. Uh, you can see we didn't have the departments in there yet, but I could put in payroll and bring everyone up in payroll. So that way, if a generic call came in and they said, can I talk to someone in payroll? And you didn't know who was available. You could quickly put in payroll and look for the first available person and, you know, send the call to them. <clears throat> Okay, you can also uh, type in the phone number or the department or the location. Here's the uh, 
busy lamp field, uh, which is just a way for you to list everybody. It's uh, set up. This one happens to be set up uh, numerically. Uh, you can adjust it. You can go in and customize how it's set up. But you can also set up separate lists. You can see if you look over to the left, you see it says all with a star. That's a default. But there's also one I put in there as test. So I can create ones. And when I create them, um, then uh, I can go ahead and quickly go to the different uh, groups. So you, you can imagine one's all, but the other one might be, you know, IT department. The next one might be um, accounting, uh, whatever department, warehouse, I, whatever you have going on there, you could go ahead and put in as a group. And that way you can look at the whole group and see who's on or off the phone. Similar to how we were talking about looking it up by department, but you can really customize it to be whatever you want. Maybe there's people... Uh, you know, in different departments, you want to put them all on one or whatever. So you can, your imagination is the guide. You build them however you want. These are customized. And I'll show you how to do that here in a few minutes. But uh, that's what that looks like. All you have to do on this, when you have this available, is go to the person you want to transfer a call to and click on their name. So when you click on their name, uh, that's going to begin the transfer. And then you can release it. There is a way, if you want to go through the manual, if you just prefer to click on somebody and it sends a call and hangs up and you're ready to process the next call, that can be set up as well. So I always talk about release, but you can set up these attendant councils so they just send the call after you either dial in the extension or click on somebody and hangs up and then offers you the next call. It really just depends on what your setup is. If your setup is where you process a call and announce it, then obviously this is the proper setup and this is the default setup. So if uh, it needs to be changed, uh, there's some, uh, you know, file, calls, directories. There's, uh, you can go through the, the different settings and I'm not gonna go too deep into those and, and change that. So it just depends on how you're processing calls. Um, what this doesn't show you, it shows you everyone green little phones, but it will show you presence. It'll show you when someone's on the phone by being red. It'll show you when someone's phone's ringing. So it does give you real time um, information about if the person's available to take the call. That doesn't mean you can't transfer the call still. If you are in just sending calls, no matter if they're on the phone or not, if they're on the phone, you click the button, it'll send it to their phone. If they have two lines coming in, uh, then they will see it on the second line. They'll get the caller identification. They can make a determination if they're going to answer this call or if they're going to let it go to voicemail. So you can still process even if someone's on the call. Obviously, every organization is different. So maybe your organization says, you know, hold the call until they're off. And if that's the case, then you'll have tools to do that as well. Okay, and then there's the uh, area I was talking about with the little different phone books. You got the uh, all in there. And if I wanted to go ahead and set one up, I would go to the directories up top and go down where it says edit BLF list. And then it'll bring up this little board. Hopefully you can see it, I highlighted in yellow. But it'll give you everybody's name over on the left-hand side. And you can just add them in and name a group. I named this group test, but you can see up here it says create. You hit create, you name it. So for you, maybe you'll name it IT. And then you go through and pick all the IT members and move them over to this list. And then you'll have a little side list that you can quickly access to see who's on the phone, who's off the phone, who's available, or who's in that department. Because a lot of times what happens is someone will call in and say, I want a department, not a person. And then you might need to see some who's in that department, uh, depending on how big you guys are. Okay, so you can create yourself a little list. Uh, you can move them up and down so they lay out the way you want. Maybe there's a priority to the way you want them laid out as little keys. Uh, so if you do that, then you're going to have uh, different little lists along the way that you can go ahead and customize, which is kind of nice. Uh, so the next uh, little thing over, I didn't, uh, on this particular one, I didn't have any call history, but it's, uh, so I illustrated it by the uh, little lines, but call history this will be a uh, call history for all inbound calls to all councils. It'll show up here and it starts at the newest ones will be at the top and the older ones will be down. So it'll give you name and number and where you sent it and how often they call and the type of call it was. Was it internal or was it an outside call coming in? Uh, and then who answered it, the, the council. So this is a call history for all the inbound calls. Uh, so you can access them if you ever need to. 
And then the next one over is just your call history. So it's gonna be just the ones that you answered at your console. So if you answered four calls ago, something, you need that number now, you'll be able to access this and see the time and, the, and, and all the goodies about who called in and where you sent it, okay? So that's kind of the phone book and the lamp field. So this is the area you're gonna to use to look up people when you don't know their extensions or you know process a call pretty easily through here. Um, and uh, that's available to you. The next little area is the middle area. So we got through the top, the very top of the icons. We went through all the phone book and busy lamp field and your call histories. Now we're going to this little center section. The little center section is a place, it also has little uh, file folders or tabs that you can hit for different uh, information. And so we're gonna go through each of those. So here it is, you got incoming calls, calls on hold, transferred calls, park calls, and my uh, queued calls. So <clears throat> these are just different ways to see what's going on. If you place a call on hold, it goes off of your inco incoming call board you know, and it's not going to be available anywhere. So you have to go to the actual hold calls to recover that held call. So basically when a call comes in, it's going to show up in order under incoming calls. Uh, the top one is going to be uh, the first one in, and then you just can double click the one that's coming in to answer it. So let's look at the incoming call. Here it is. Here comes an incoming call. That's me, of course. And then um, I could go ahead and double click on this name and answer it if I don't want to hit the answer key on my computer, or I don't want to go up top and hit the icon, or I don't want to go down below and hit the F key, then I could just hit it here by double clicking. Some people really like double click. So uh, if you are using the double click, there you go. Uh, so that's what it looks like. It says one, and then the next one will be two, three, four, five. It's an order of the uh, order they came in, so you know how to process them. Um, it tells you the line, the caller identification. Now, once I answer it, it goes away from the incoming call. It'll go somewhere else. It goes below, so I'll show you that. But right now, knowing I, it hasn't been answered, it's just giving me a bad list. The next thing is calls on hold. So when I place a call on hold, uh, it'll give me the timer of how long they've been on hold. It does recall to you, and that timer is set up when, and by design. So I don't know what your specific one will be. I could put a note here. I could click in a note. This is a sales call or whatever it is. I could put in a note who it's holding for, you know, so I can process it and remember. Uh, so I could put in little notes by clicking on the little box and, and typing in goodies. Uh, but these are uh, you know, your, held, your held calls list. So if you hold a lot of calls in your organization, this is where you can go to them to recover them. To recover them, I'm just going to double click and I will have the call back. Transferred calls, these are only gonna show up uh, while the call is ringing to the person I transferred it to or uh, until it goes to voicemail. Then it disappears off this list. So this is a way I can recover very quickly a specific call I transferred. There is a cancel key up top, but that's just for the last call that you transferred. If there's multiple calls being transferred and you wanna go to the second one, you can just go down and double click and it'll recover the call. Uh, so it makes it really easy, okay? Park calls. I kind of skipped by that for this customer that I was did this for, but I do want to talk about it. The, the system does have the ability to park calls. What a park call is, is a call that uh, you park and then you would have to use paging to announce what number it's parked at. So it would provide you a number from 000 to 999, uh, or I think it's two digit, uh, from zero, um, no, three numbers. Uh, to 111, so that one's holding ID is 111. So I would page and say, there's a call holding on 111. They would go to their phone where they have a park retrieve button. They can hit park retrieve and put in the code and grab the call. So not everyone has this uh, feature for the parking, but it is available. And then this, what I have up here is calls queued. This is your activity, you know, what all you have going on. The call, the call timers, it just gives you a listing. So you can have a one glance. <clears throat> this is the source and the destination. This is once you've answered the call, it'll show up in the source. So you can then process that call. So you can look at the box and understand what call you're on. And then the destination is where you transfer it to. And it'll show there again until the call 
you process another call or until the call goes to voicemail. If you've already processed a call and you need to check on a call you transferred earlier, then you have to go to the transferred uh, tab up here to see all those calls. So this is just the latest thing you've done. So let's look at that. Here comes the inbound call. You can see it's under source and it'll tell you information. You can scroll up and down. It does give you other information and you do have a place to click in notes. Um, so here's the device. It just tells you what line that you, that's me, the attendant console. It shows me the caller ID, name, and number. So you can see that I've answered this, and you can see down here these F keys have provided little, it's kind of hard to see because it's a little stretchy, but there's a mute here if I use F6 or if I click on the button that says F6. I can um, uh, park the call. I can turn on my tones. So you can do some of the same functionality that you did, we're going to do up top. Uh, through these little buttons. And then, um, well, I didn't show you the destination, but the destination is the other box, so you can see the call go. So down below here are those F keys I was telling you about. Let's look at those real quick. Here comes a call. You can see that it, it turns green and offers you answer on F2. It doesn't normally say answer until the call comes in. Then I could hit these F key. So you, again, there's multiple ways for you to peel this. I could go up here, double click on the name, or I can go down below, hit answer, I can hit enter, I can go up top and hit the icon. So that's the way it looks. Once you've answered the key, the uh, phone, it no longer says answer. So that's what I have. Uh, I want to thank you for joining. Hopefully this gives you a quick refresher on how this all lays out. And uh, good luck on your new console. There are um, There will be a full manual and guide that's out there. If you haven't received it, uh, make sure you reach out uh, to whoever's working with you uh, to uh, install your phone system so they can make sure they get you those, those, that information. And I thank you very much for your time.